Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the second video in the SDM32 Modbus series, and today we will see how to read coils and discrete inputs. You must watch the previous video, as we will continue where we left off last time. Also I am not going to explain every detail that has been already explained in the previous video. If you are starting the Modbus series, better watch the playlist in the order videos are placed. The connection is the same as how it was in the previous video, the only change is that I am using the F446 today. Here is the code from the previous video, and we will continue with this one. The only change I have made is that I am using the UART2 today with the F446. Alright let's see the address again. The coils are 1 bit memories, whose address ranges from 1 to 10,000. The master can perform read or write operations. The discrete inputs on the other hand starts from 10,001 to 20,000. And these memory locations are read only, so the master cannot write into it. The function code, 1, can be used to read the coils, and the function code, 2, can be used to read the inputs. Both are 1 bit in size, but the maximum amount of coils or inputs that can be read continuously are limited to 2000. I have already explained the data size limitation in the previous video, and this is the result of the same. Anyway, the master will send the query in the similar way it did for the registers. It will send the slave address, followed by the function code, then the start address of the coil followed by the number of coils it wants to read, and at last the CRC. In total it makes up the 8 bytes. Here is the TX data buffer. We will keep the same slave address. The function code will be 1, to read the coils. Next we need to send the start address. Let's see the slave software I am using. Here I have enabled the function code 1 to read the coils. They are 1 bit in size. The start address and the offset both are set to 1. Here I am displaying 100 values. Since the offset is also set to 1, the master needs to send 0, in order to access the first coil. I have already explained it in the previous video, the master sends the address, which is the difference between the address it wants to access and the offset. Similarly, to access the coil 2, it needs to send the address 1, and to access the coil 3, it needs to send the address 2, and so on. So let's say the master wants to start reading from the first coil, it should send the address 0. The address takes 2 bytes, and therefore the TX data buffer 2 and 3 are 0. Next is the number of coils the master wants to read. This also takes 2 bytes, and let's say the master wants to read 8 coils. I am starting with 8 coils as each coil takes 1 bit, and this will make our data of 1 byte. The CRC calculation will remain similar. And finally we will send this query. Let's delete this as it is not useful anymore in case of coils. Alright let's build the code, and see what data are we receiving. I am adding a breakpoint after the callback function. Let me change the data format to hex, and restart the debugger. Alright we have hit the breakpoint. You can see the TX data buffer contains the query sent by the master. We have the slave ID, the function code, 2 bytes for the start address, the next 2 bytes for the number of coils, and the last 2 bytes for the CRC. You can see the data sent by the master here. This is the actual data sent by the slave. The master requested the data for 8 coils and the slave sent a byte of information. Here is the data stored in the coils, I have set it randomly. The master is requesting from the first coil itself, so let's see the data for the first 8 coils. We have on, off, 
on, on, off, on, off, on. If you combine it as a single byte, it corresponds to AD in hexadecimal. We have received the same in the RX data buffer. The slave response consists of the slave ID, the function code, the number of bytes it is sending, the actual data itself, and finally the CRC. Reading 8 coils was a perfect situation, as the slave also sends the data in the byte format. Now let's see what happens if we read 10 coils. I am keeping everything else the same. Notice the third byte in the RX data buffer, which indicates how many bytes of data is sent by the slave. The slave is actually sending two bytes of data for 10 coils. The first byte is 0 cross AD, and the second byte is 0. If you look at the ninth and 10th coils, they both are off. The information for the first 8 coils is stored in the first bytes, and the data for the ninth and 10th coil is stored in the first 2 bits of the second byte. So one thing we know from this is the slave sends the data in the byte format. If the master is reading up to 8 coils, it will send one byte of data. If the master is reading more than 8 coils, up to 16 coils, it will send 2 bytes. Basically, the data is going to come in bytes, the number of bytes depends on the number of coils the master has requested. Let's try one more thing. This time I will read the 10 coils, starting from the second coil. You can see we have received the two bytes of information. We have 0 cross 56, and 2. Let's cross check this with the data stored. This time we are reading from the second coil, so we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. This is exactly what the master has received. I hope you understood how to read these coils, and how the slave is going to send them in a group of bytes. Now after the master has received the bytes, it still needs to separate them in the bits. Let's define an integer array. Keep in mind the array length should be in the multiples of 8, or else the final data will get corrupted. Since I am reading 10 coils, I am keeping the length 16. We will write a program inside the callback function itself. Here is a very simple program to extract the bits from the byte buffer. The third byte of the RX data buffer indicates how many bytes of information is sent by the slave. And then the information actually starts from the fourth byte, the RX data 3. Let's start with J is 0, and I is 0. The data at RX data 3 will shift to the right by 0 places, and it will and with 1. When we use the and 1, we are actually extracting the least significant bit. Now the I will increment to 1, and the data will shift to the right by 1, and the least significant bit will be extracted. We will do this until all the bits from the RX data 3 are extracted. Then the J will increment to 1, and this process of extracting the least significant bit will again start, but for the RX data 4. Let's test this now. You can see here we got the data in the zeros and ones. Let's compare it with the data we had stored in the coils. We are reading from the coil 2, and we have 0110101001. This is exactly what we got in the data buffer. So we were able to read coils and extract the bits from the byte format we got. Now let's quickly see how to read the discrete inputs. We will enable the function code 2 in the slave software. The address for the inputs starts from 10001. We will keep the same offset, 
So the address for the first input will be 0. And I am displaying 20 values here. Let's give some random values to these inputs. Alright, the process for reading the inputs is the same as that of the coils. The only difference is instead of function code 1, now we will use code 2. I am going to read from the 10 inputs, starting from the first input itself. Let's build and debug the code. Alright we have got ourselves the values in the data buffer. If you compare them to the ones we have stored, they are obviously going to be the same. So we saw how to read the coils and discrete inputs. The process is same for both, as the difference between them is that master can write the data into the coils, but on the other hand, the inputs are read only. I hope you understood the video. We will continue with the series, and in the next video, we will write the data into the holding registers, and coils. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.